Welcome to the TrickShift Garage. In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the transmission fluid on a 2009 to 2012 Nissan Altima with a 2.5 liter engine. This involves dropping the entire pan and letting the fluid drain out that way. I made a previous video that was on a 2007 to 2008. Those actually have drain plugs, but this process is going to be slightly different. With that out of the way, let's get started. So the CVT transmission actually has two variations. There's a 19 bolt pattern and there's an 18 bolt pattern. Make sure you double check yours. All you have to do is go underneath the car and just count how many bolts that you have. And then you'll know if you need an 18 bolt pattern or a 19 bolt pattern. And I'll have those links down in the description below. All right, so the next step is to open up this uh, dipstick. You'll take your flathead, you'll slide in there, hugging the bracket, the metal bracket there. And then you'll pry, you'll put your screwdriver down this way, and then pull up, and there it goes. Alright, so ignoring the fact that I have a drain plug, the first step is to take your 10 millimeter socket and start loosening all the bolts around the transmission pan. You want to go slowly when you break them loose so you don't snap a bolt head. Once they're all loose, you can start removing the bolts from the back of the pan toward the front but be sure to have plenty of towels and rags on the ground to catch any spray that could occur. What I like to do is hold the pan, like there, lower it down, and angle it towards the pan, let it rest. Okay, so we got the pan down, everything looks good. Um, there's the filter. If you want to change the filter as well, I actually have a video that I made that goes through this process. You can click that video link by clicking the card at the top. All right, so here's the pan. And what you gotta do is take out these magnets. And you can see here, this is 200,000 miles and what it does to the magnet over time. Anyway, there's two magnets. We gotta clean them off. Get all this, uh, get all this metal particles off. So you just take a rag and you just wipe it out. Make it go away. Wipe it clean. Okay. All right, then go ahead and get our brake clean. And we're gonna wipe it down again. Basically just taking all the metal pieces off and clean them up. Do the same thing here. Got our magnets clean. All right, so the next part is we gotta clean up this pan. So, we'll just wipe it down again. Once we get everything cleaned off, we'll get our magnet and we'll put it right over these like two circular pumps there. And put the other one on here. At this point, we're ready to put the pan back on. We want to make sure that our new gasket is the correct one and it lines up all the holes. There's a couple smaller holes. There's one here and there's one over here that just have boss uh, pins that go in. These are not for actual bolts, but they're, to, they're there to ensure that you're putting the pan in the gasket incorrectly. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and install the pan. Oh, this is going to be a pain. Whew. Make sure you take your time with this process because the gasket can fall off very easily. Use the two boss pin holes on the pan to make sure you have it lined up correctly. And once you got it lined up, tack it with a bolt in the front and the back of the pan and then just go over the gasket around the whole entire pan to make sure that it's flush. Alright, so the next step now is to go ahead and put all the 10 millimeter bolts back into the transmission pan. Um, at this point, I wouldn't worry about tightening it yet. Just get them all in place and, again, make sure that the gasket material is flush between the pan and the transmission. The next step is to go ahead and tighten all the bolts of the transmission pan to 70 inch pounds. Um, I didn't see a pattern that I had to use, so I'm just gonna kinda go back and forth a bit and kinda rotate around. All right, so once we get tightened down, we want to spray it off, the brake clean, and 
just wipe everything down to make it easier to identify any leaks that happen to come. So the transmission fluid that I'm using is Castrol Transmax CVT. It's good fluid, it works, it's fully synthetic, uh, enables smoother shift, longer life, all that good stuff, and special smooth drive technology. Anyway, we're gonna put six quarts in, and then we're gonna head and uh, measure the fluid level, make sure it's good, and keep going from there. All right, now we can go ahead and put our funnel in and start adding fluid. All right, I'm gonna pull this out. Push in until you hear it pop. We start the car, we're letting it idle. Um, we gotta get it back up to operating temperature. I put my cardboard sheet, I flipped it over, and I put it right underneath the, uh, the transmission. So if there's any leaking or dripping, it will show up on that piece of cardboard to kind of give me a clue that, hey, something's, something's still not buttoned down all the way. Okay, so just a trick for you, or waiting for the everything to warm back up. You want to shift your your shifter. You want to push your brake pedal like normal, and you just kind of want to go through each gear. Hold it for maybe like two or three seconds. Shift again. Neutral. Drive. Yeah, make sure you have your your foot down on the brake. You can kind of come over here. <clears throat> And come back up the park. Wipe this off. Stick it back in. Hold it in there for three seconds. Pull it out. I think you can see here. Uh, right there, you can see we're in the cross hatched area. So we're good to go. If you you check yours and it's a little bit low. I mean, add probably like a half quart at a time and then just go back and check again and so on until it looks like it's in the right cross hatched area. That's it. Thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Trip Shift Garage videos. We'll see you on the next one.